The Art Institute of Chicago is one of the most respected museums in the entire world, which is why my hun and I went to go visit the museum on our most recent trip to Chicago. So in this video, I'm gonna share with you my top 10 things to see at the Art Institute of Chicago and everything you need to know about visiting coming right up. Encourage. I like to make videos on travel, food, and life, and today we're talking about my top 10 things to see at the Art Institute of Chicago. First, I'm going to give you a really quick history of the museum, then go into my top 10 things to see, and stick around for the end because I'm going to give you some critical need-to-know information, including the nearest public transportation stops the price of admission, how to get free admission if you qualify, and so much more at the end of the video. So definitely, if you're excited, give this video a thumbs up. Don't forget to click subscribe to my channel and turn on that notification bell, and let's just jump right into it. After the Great Fire of 1871, Chicago went into this era of rapid expansion. Local leaders and patrons identified the arts as being essential to metropolitan life. Eight years later in 1879, the Chicago Academy of Fine Arts was established. Flash forward in time, it was rebuilt and renamed to the Art Institute of Chicago, where it hosted in 1893 the World's Fair. And later that year, the building was turned into the art museum that you see today. Like I mentioned before, the Art Institute of Chicago is one of the most recent respected museums in the world and the second largest in the United States of America. It has over 3,000 artworks and one of the largest impressionist and post-impressionist collections outside of the Louvre in Paris. Not only do you find paintings, but there are sculptures, textiles, prints, and a whole lot more to see. Speaking of what to see, now let's jump right into my top 10 things to see at the Art Institute of Chicago. The first thing to see is American Gothic by Grant Wood, 1930. Wood was an American artist who went to study Flemish Renaissance art. When he came back to the United States, he settled in his hometown of Iowa and was inspired by the small towns of the time. It was the 1930s, so the Great Depression hit hard. And so he was really captivated by the rural values, the resiliency of the community. So he asked his sister and his dentist to pose as the farmer and his daughter, an iconic American painting and a must see if you are going to go to the Art Institute of Chicago. Second on my top 10 things to see are the arts of Africa and the arts of Asia sections. What I love about the African art section is that it illustrates the vastness and diversity of the African continent as well as the relationships between neighboring cultures. You'll see brilliant pieces of sculpture and masks and amazing jewelry and so much more from Northern Africa, Southern Africa, Coastal Africa, from Central Africa, and it is absolutely breathtaking. Similarly, the Arts of Asia section showcases prints and artworks, uh, tapestries, sculptures that span a millennia. It is jaw-dropping. Next, we have a Sunday afternoon on the island of La Grande Jatte by Georges Chirret, 1884 to 1886. People actually hated it in the 1800s, but now it's considered one of Chirret's most notable works and one of the most notable works of the entire 19th century. Georges Chirret was actually one of the people to invent a whole new painting technique. The pointillist techniques he used was a technique based on research in optical and color theory. And this technique relies on the ability of the eyes and the mind of the viewer to blend the color spots into a full range of tones. If you think about it, his whole painting by dot is exactly how our printers, our televisions, and even our computer screens, or any screen really works today. I think that's absolutely brilliant. And you can kind of tell that something is different by the painting because it has this grainy, uh, quality to it but again that's his little teeny dots that he put in a pattern when you step back in it your eyes see it as shapes and forms so what do you think about this painting do you hate it do you love it put your thoughts in the comments down below I want to know what you guys think next we have the Thorne miniature rooms by Narcissa Niblack Thorne also known as Mrs. James Ward Thorne are you guys old enough to remember the store Montgomery Ward? Let me also know in the comments down below. The Thorn Miniature Rooms are a series of 68 miniature shoebox-sized rooms 
Mrs. Thorne put so much money and energy into these things. And at first when I walked by, I saw the miniature rooms. Okay, fine, I like art and design, sure. I, you know, I'll look at some miniatures. I was blown away by these. Mrs. Thorne traveled extensively and she was a socialite. So nothing she did was lackluster and she left no detail unturned. Typically when you're visiting a museum, you stand back to take in the whole scene or the whole piece. But with these, you actually have to like, get in really, really close to see the magnificent detail. Mrs. Thorne went so far as to hire professional carpenters and even seamstresses and rug makers to create these little miniature scenes. The light coming in is magnificent and she even painted gardens. When I tell you the detail of this is incredible, this was, oh my goodness, this was one of the most popular places in the whole museum. Even some of the little miniature desks have a working lock and key. She was on her game and I was really pleasantly surprised by this exhibit. So if you're visiting the Art Institute of Chicago, I highly, highly, highly recommend to stop by the Thorn Miniature Rooms, The Bedroom by Vincent Van Gogh, 1889. This painting showcases his bedroom in the Yellow House, which is Van Gogh's very first home that he owned. What I love about this painting is that it was Van Gogh's first house. So if you guys have seen this video, you know that I am a recent homeowner, so I totally get Van Gogh. He was super excited about decorating and he went all out decorating, so much so that he exhausted himself and had to spend two and a half days in bed. And there you have it. This painting, the bedroom was formed. This painting is one of three in the world. The first is at the Van Gogh Museum in Amsterdam. The second is right here in the Art Institute of Chicago. And the third is at the Musée d'Orsay in Paris. So if you can't go to Amsterdam or Paris, you can come to Chicago, baby, and see it at the Art Institute of Chicago. Nighthawks by Edward Hopper, 1942. This is one of the best known paintings of the 20th century. And Hopper actually took his inspiration from a restaurant in Greenwich Avenue in New York City. Fluorescent and artificial light was a new thing in the 1940s, and so Hopper actually has a whole scene where that artificial light is prominent. What's also interesting is that the red-haired woman was actually modeled by his wife. Most people look at this painting and they see it as a symbol of isolation, especially during this whole pandemic, but Hopper denies this. But at the same time, he admits that maybe subconsciously he was really speaking towards being lonely in a big city. The loneliness of being in a big city is in direct contrast to the next thing you have to see at the Art Institute of Chicago, which is Nightlife by Archibald J. Motley Jr. in 1943. Archibald was a Chicago painter who saw Nighthawks a year before, and then a year later in 1943, painted Nightlife. He wanted to showcase the young, sophisticated nightlife of African Americans in the South Side of Chicago. Nightlife shows people in vibrant colors, dancing, they're interconnected. They are very much alive and well and together and living their best lives. And it's a can't miss at the Art Institute of Chicago. The Art Institute of Chicago also has a number of exhibitions. When we went, we saw the Toulouse Lautrec and the Celebrity Culture of Paris exhibit. I studied graphic design and so looking at these large poster prints, which were new at the time, were just enjoyable. They made me smile. They were very vibrant, they were bold, and they featured some of the celebrities of Paris. I absolutely loved it. Check out the Art Institute of Chicago's website, Art ic.edu to see what exhibits are there. Some exhibits may only be there for just a few short months and some up to a year and some exhibits are just ongoing. Check to see if there's anything interesting for your next visit. Into the world there came a soul called Ida by Ivan Albright, 1929 to 1930. I put this on my top 10 things to see at the Art Institute of Chicago because it was, I, I don't even know how to explain it. Once you walk into the gallery, you'll see Nighthawk on one side and then you'll kind of be wrapped up in the solitary kind of quiet night scene that he paints. On the other side, it's like, bam, like, whoa, what just happened? And that shock and awe made me put this painting on the list. Albright was a medical illustrator during World War I, which heavily influenced his haunting portrayals of like death and decay. Further, he portrayed the body's vulnerability to age, disease, and death. And this includes a whole series of haunting self-portraits, and one of which the artist made in his hospital bed 
three days before he died. Whoa, it's a little heavy, it's a little dark, but these paintings are unlike anything I have ever seen and I think are worth checking out. In contrast to death and decay and darkness, we have Two Sisters on the Terrace by Pierre-Auguste Renoir, 1881. This is one of the most popular paintings at the Art Institute of Chicago and of course it had to make my top 10 list. It is charming, it is bright, it is colorful, it is happy and you can totally see why people are drawn to this painting. These two girls were not actually sisters but it shows the vibrancy and the radiance of two little girls on a warm summer day. Those are my top 10 things to see. So here's what you need to know before you go see these top 10 10 things to see at the Art Institute of Chicago. First, we have pricing. How much does it cost for admission at the Art Institute of Chicago? Well, there's two different types of pricing. There's general admission, and then there's what's known as the fast pass, which allows you to skip the line privileges for any special ticketed exhibition. For adults ages 18 and up, it costs $25 for general admission and $35 for the fast pass. Teens ages 14 to 17 years old, seniors, as well as students, it's $19 for general admission and $29 for the fast pass. If you're interested in gaining free admission to the Art Institute of Chicago, then you need to fall within one of these categories that I'm gonna talk about right now. First, you have to be a child ages zero up until 13 years old. Next, if you are active in the US military and show ID. And finally, if you show your link or WIC card, you can get free admission to the museum even when the museum tickets are sold out without having to schedule tickets or buy tickets in advance, which you typically have to to buy tickets in advance online if you're gonna go. Check out the museum's website at artic.edu to see if you qualify for free admission and how to get those tickets. Other than that, y'all, unfortunately, you have to pay. You are allowed to bring your cameras as well as pencils and some paper to sketch, but there is a healthy list of what not to bring. For instance, you cannot take flash photography, you cannot bring video cameras, you cannot bring microphones, you cannot bring selfie sticks, you cannot bring food. You cannot bring backpacks larger than a standard backpack. You cannot bring a baby carrying backpack and you can't bring any art materials outside of sketch pencils. Don't be alarmed if you're wearing a backpack and the staff members ask you to take your backpack off your back and turn it around because there's a lot of artwork that are just freestanding and if you were to accidentally turn around and knock over a vase from the fifth century, that's gonna be an expensive day at the museum. Just make sure that you really pack light. You don't need much and the museum is actually open Mondays and Thursdays through Sundays from 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. The museum is closed on Tuesdays and Wednesdays on Thanksgiving, which is the fourth Thursday in November, as well as Christmas Day on December 25th and New Year's Day on January 1st. So plan your visits accordingly. The best time to visit is during the mornings or on Mondays between two and closing. Try to avoid Saturdays if you can. Audio guides are typically available for $7, although right now they're on an audio guide hiatus, but if you download the Free Museum app, you can get the same audio guide content there, available in English, French, Spanish, Chinese, as well as Korean. You can get to the museum using public transportation and Divi. The closest rail stop is the Adams Wabash station, which is a block away, and Monroe, which is a few blocks away. There are multiple bus lines that stop in front of the museum, and if you don't know how to take public transportation in Chicago, that's okay, because I did a whole video right here that you can check out detailing all the passes and prices and how to get around Chicago on a budget, i.e. how to take public transportation in Chicago, and I list a whole section on Divi bikes, so definitely check that out. The museum is accessible by a wheelchair with wheelchairs available on a first come first serve basis and there are elevators that'll take you to each of the different floors. The museum is multiple levels, definitely get a map. It is the second largest in the US and so I don't mind getting lost, but if you wanna know where you are, definitely grab one of those maps. So that's the history, my top 10 things to see at the Art Institute of Chicago and what you need to know before you go. This is part of my entire planning a trip to Chicago playlist that you can check out right here where I talk about things to do in Chicago. I'll have my vlogs posted there as well as this video. Definitely check that out. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to click subscribe to my channel and click the notification bell because my next videos are gonna be vlogs of our actual trip to Chicago. You don't wanna miss it. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch y'all in the next video.